Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Welcome once again. I'm going to be talking about music. This is one of my favorite bands of all time. A very close favorite and considered the greatest, in my opinion, but that's bias. I'm going to be talking about Kiss. So the band was formed in 1973 by Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons, Ace Frehley and Peter Chris, And it's known for its amazing live performances, the makeup, fire breathing, elaborate sets on stage, crazy antics. It was my perfect blend of rock and roll, heavy metal. Well, I don't know if I would really put them in the heavy metal category, although they did have some deep songs and very happy, poppy rock songs. Now, if you go onto Wikipedia, you can tell it can be held in that um, criteria of one of the greatest bands, but I can see how it's all subjective and I understand. This podcast will be more about how Kiss affects me and my love for the band, but in general, I'll start with Kiss being one of the best selling bands of all time, selling more than 75 million records worldwide, including 21 million certified albums. KISS holds the title as America's number one gold record award-winning group of all time, earning 30 gold albums. KISS has 14 platinum albums, with three albums being multi-platinum. They've been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They've been ranked ninth by MTV as the greatest metal band of all time, and so on and so forth. If you're interested, Wikipedia has a cool section where it breaks it into the early years, the rise to prominence, the film projects, the final makeup years, so on and so forth. It's a very good Wikipedia page. I recommend it. So I can go in through all the albums and just my general love of this band. But I think we start with the first album in general, and talk about the things in my life that were going on and how it, the band connected with me in, in a way that's different. So, I am so little that I don't remember when it was. I have vaguest memories or if it's the way my mind is piecing things together of bouncing on my father's knee, listening to a kiss. I might have been three years old, two years old. <clears throat> the first album came out in 73, and I was enamored with it. And I also remember the Rolling Stones and plenty of other rock and roll bands. But Kiss stood out to me, and when I was about six or seven, we had, we stayed with my grandmother for a while. And when my mother got an apartment on Avenue U in, uh, well, I was my grandmother was in Brooklyn too, but she was in Canarsie. When she got an apartment on Avenue U, we moved in. A friend of the family, her name was Connie. Her son, who was a teenager at the time, gave me the record play that was a suitcase. Some read along comic book stories, Transformers, G.I. Joe, where you would play the record and it would come inside and tell you to turn the page. And he gave me some Kiss albums. Now, I am getting chills thinking about my reintroduction to them because I knew immediately who they were when I heard the songs. It gave me such excitement. I think it was the beginning of the passion of my music, and I do give credit to my father in that circumstance. This band blew me away. The makeup, everything surrounding the um, personas, you didn't know who they were. I gobbled everything up. By then, it was 1977, 78. And then they had these live albums that were incredible to this day, in my opinion. Never beaten in quality, performance, sound. They're legendary. 
So it's Kiss Alive and Kiss Alive 2. You open, I'm talking records and holding the vinyl, the needle on, putting the needles on. It's It was a very distinct era in time for me. And I was so into them that it was just an obsession. I uh, described in one of my other podcasts around 12, I'm going to say between 11, let's say between 10 and 12. One of my friends from school in first grade or, you know, around then third grade, Burton, asked me to come over and... I remember going over and finding out he loved Kiss, and it was immediate bonding. We're still brothers to this day. And he taught me how to play guitar. And I explained how it was therapy for me. It was going through stuff in my life. And Kiss, to me, when you analyze them, they have this quality of being really deep when they want to be, dark and heavy. And they have the ability to be really hopeful and really good, happy feelings. Maybe it has to do with every one of them participating in multiple ways. Obviously, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons are the front runners, kind of have always been. Ace Frehley and Peter Chris would lend their talents and they would sing on some songs. They even had solo albums put out. They each had their own album. They had comic books, lunchboxes, shitty, crappy ABC movie. Uh, just an amazing performance, celebrities, and no one knew who they were without the makeup on. They can go pr- practically anywhere. So it was a weird thing. And I mean, cutting out of school one day, going home, getting the magazines, cutting them up. Because in the school, they had this fair of some sort where they were pressing buttons. So you could pay a certain amount of money and get buttons pressed. We stayed there all day as we came back with all of our... Um, you even went to Zigzag Records on Avenue U, got the magazines, cut them out. We must have made a hundred pins, spent all the money we had. And when we went to the Kiss concert, we I sold some of them. I made enough to fucking buy shirts. I think I bought shirts for people. I was wearing them. People go, we want that. Yeah, you know, two dollars, whatever it was. Uh, and I had the pleasure of seeing them in the early days. Up to later, thankfully, I had family members who were into music, and like I said, my father was a big fan. So I've seen them with the makeup on, makeup off. They're probably the band I've seen the most. So I'm reintroduced again by a family member of my mother, uh, a friend of my mother's. Years later, I find out a really good friend is playing guitar. He knows the songs. He teaches me how to play guitar. And my love for Kiss again is reignited. I think we dressed as Kiss for like five Halloweens in a row every year. I'm dressed as Kiss for no other reason than to dress as Kiss sometimes. It was just a real big part of my life. And like I said, it's it's hard when I look back at uh, Metallica and other bands, Black Sabbath more in, t- in tune with the timeline. Um, for that fact, Led Zeppelin and bands like that. Kiss had this variety of music styles that worked incredibly well. Got the ant, uh, one of their greatest songs is Beth. It's a piano song. You got uplifting songs like Shout It Out Loud, Deep Hard Grooves like Deuce, God of Thunder, or, um, Anthems of rock and roll all night, and their popularity skyrocketed. They held attendance records for years. Now, I'm going to admit, I'm not bringing in the personalities into this. And I believe, I, I, I can understand it's valid when people say, you know, oh, I used to like Kiss, but, you know, since Gene Simmons is a jerk, yes, he is a jerk off, so. You know, I, I can understand that, but I'm, I'm I'm putting that aside. That came later in my life, learning about certain things. And up until they took their makeup off, and several years after, I just separated from the music itself. In my opinion, I would say 
they were great up to a certain point, and then they were very good. So you would get three to five songs on an album that are really good that you like, one great song, which at this point, which is an achievement, a great achievement for most bands these days. So they were on my radar, but they weren't the place I would go to the concerts. And well, that kind of changed because my life changed. There's no feeling like going back, putting on a Kiss song or a certain album, reconnecting with that kid in me, the teenager, the rebellious, crazy, makeup wearing, long haired uh, maniac. The bonds of friendship from putting on the makeup, the friends that would play each part. You know, they have the star child, the demon, the spaceman, the cat. They even had more, um, the fox and the Ankh warrior. They had two members come in after H. Freely and Peter Chris left. Performances that'll blow your mind are littered everywhere on YouTube. All around, you could check them out. The performances in the 70s are legendary. Like I said, the albums are live one and two. There's not one person I know who directly outright hates them. But this is maybe not the type of music. But I think that's the band Kiss is. You're going to find some stuff you like. You're going to understand their place in history. How important they were to the rock scene. To... Um, sales in general, you know, they weren't doing that well um, record-wise up to the live album, but their reputation for live performances and the sound was just legendary. So I even went to the reunion. I think it was in late 90s. They had Peter Chris and Ace Frehley come in. And then I seen the Psycho Circus was like, I think the last tour. They're doing the last tour now, End of the Road. And as old as they are, they perform. Just incredible how they keep themselves together. I don't care how many wigs they burn off, lighting fires, and putting their guitars on fire. And they just, Paul Stanley looks amazing. He's still got, you know, enough to... Well, he never needed the, none of them needed the high-end uh, mastery of vo vocal and uh, ranges. And they was, just knew how to use what they had really good. So Paul Stanley's style would come out in the songs when he sang Gene Simmons. And if you go and listen to Shout It Out Loud, they share lyrics. Like one person will sing one part, then the chorus comes, and another one will sing. And it gives you goosebumps. And... It's just a really happy, charged up feeling. And unlike, like I said, other bands, you can get the the deep ones, their concept album with the Elder and some of the offbeat stuff. You got the pop, uh, what was it almost a disco, I Was Made For Loving You, which became one of their most popular songs. More recent was Forever. Uh, they took their makeup off after certain years. Decided to go a new way. And like I said, I was really into the music even then. And noticed just that, like in a lot of bands, like Metallica, you get to the Black Album, amazing. And then some people didn't like what came after. I happen to have liked it, but I could see where is it departure. And look, everybody's going to try new things. You want to expand, be creative. I don't have no problem with that. But it doesn't tarnish their record as being one of the greatest bands of all time. Performance-wise, sound-wise, just putting on the best shows ever. There are people all over. You'll hear some stories. Oh, you know, uh, Korn is an amazing band to see live. Um, ACDC. You can imagine it going back. Jimi Hendrix and whatever. But a lot of them will say, but I've never seen a better show than when I went to see a KISS concert. The the fans, the KISS army, just it's just always an amazing feel. There was never, it always felt like you had a family 
and it was the first time for me it was like that when you're looking at bands like Iron Maiden and uh, Judas Priest, there was a hardness. There was a way you were felt depicted. Maybe it's the, you know, what you're going through as a teenager and just the angst of growing up and some people have it worse than others and family. I have a some podcasts that talk about what I was going through. But with Kiss, it was different. It was like if you loved them and you shared your love of them, it didn't have to be with a group that was hardcore. And there aren't requirements to be the tough guy and wearing your leather jackets. And it just didn't feel that way. And I'm just trying to sum up the feelings I had, you know, growing up. But it felt like there was friendship, that you were part of something rather than trying to fit into something. Now, maybe, yeah, if I was a harder type person and, uh, you know, had a more of an edge, I would have fit in more, let's say, with a, although I love Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, they're some of my favorite bands, ACDC is amazing. But it's different when you've been to concerts and... I never got to play a big concert. My guitar playing days were limited to studios mostly. And I see it with a couple of friends or one friend who is an amazing musician. But just to have a fan base that just felt so in tune with the music and good vibes. There's nothing, you can't, you put on these Kiss songs and it's just a different feeling. And there's, I don't think there's a lot of bands out there like it. I'm not saying they're technically the best, vocally the best. I'll probably talk about how I found Queensryche in 1984, 85. From going to see a Kiss concert, and we didn't even know who they were. We just got driven by his mom. We were like 13, 14. I had to go see Kiss again. And it was out in like, um, it was it Nassau Coliseum? So it was like a little Long Island. And Burton's mom drove us. And we're sitting there, and they opened with, I think it was Warning. And if you listen to them and you know my love of them, in my opinion, one of the greatest singers. I will be probably discussing Queensryche in a separate podcast. And also, it will be tied into my music therapy podcast I'm going to do. Now, I chose Queensryche because it had more of an effect on what I was going through in that time period. I have used my breathing and meditation exercises with KISS also. I'll briefly explain. I had lots of things going on in my life, and I've documented, they're in some of my podcasts, so there were stages in my life, when particularly 10 to 13, then 16 and 18, 19 years old. And the music gets tied and becomes real closely associated with these issues in your life, the good times, the bad times. And my music therapy will be just the way I use my breathing and meditation to filter out and regain the love and the control you have over your emotions and the perception and the reaction to music you're, that's coming in. And in my case... I remember being in Lamar's. I don't know what band we were watching. I know what band we were seeing, but I don't know what I was there for. It was a Kiss cover band. And I was, tears were just coming out of my eyes just watching this cover band. And my uncle came over to me, put his arm around me. And I realized, like, how, you know, it's a small world. My uncle is a, well, is a great bass player, been in lots of bands. And I just sna- snapped out of it. But that's going back to, you know, 18, that's 19 years old. I'm 49 now. Going through the latest traumas in my life, particularly Queens, right? Because it was tied to my fiance and it was one of the bands that I would play that she really loved. But there are times where I'm at a point where I listen to a song and it overwhelms me. It brings on episodes and... It used to. I've been good now for several years. But I mentioned once I went to go see my cousin play. I don't know when it was. 
a long time ago now, seven years maybe, uh, maybe five, I'm not sure. And I had to leave at one point because I was getting overwhelmed. In order to deal with that, I use my breathing and meditation techniques to recognize the associations that are coming with the music and my feelings, my thoughts. So that's how I'll wrap this up. This has meant a lot to me. It's a band that I've relied on, I go to. It brings me joy, gives me that excitement and energy, positive vibes. And when I need it, it does have the variety of music styles that can get me going. A little harder edge, really deep grooves, closing in on the heavy metal aspect of hard rock. The personalities aside in real life, I just think the idea of it was genius. The promotion, the handling of it. There was never a band like them in that sense. I don't know if there ever will be what they achieved. My recommendation is to go out, listen to Kiss Alive 1 and 2, listen to their first six or seven albums, enjoy it, remember the time and place, and just try to accept what it was for the time and where they are now, doing their last tour, End of the Road, or Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. So maybe this will... Give people an idea, my love for KISS, and my respect for them as a band. A little bit of insight into some of the music therapy that I'll, or one of the podcasts I'll do, and the branch off in connection to Queen's Drag. I'll talk to everybody soon. Stay healthy.